haven't you considered background selection? <laughs> oh man, but I guess we're finished. Now, of course we have. Background selection is something that doesn't even apply to these mutation rate studies that we're always bringing up. That's why we bring them up. We bring up the good studies because this is what uh, we don't want to give our audience uh, arguments to use that are going to be used by critics to say, well, you know, this is refuted by this and this is uh, countered by that. Instead, we like directing them specifically to studies where things like selection, background selection, purifying selection, they don't have any factor whatsoever. And the reason why is because we're going to the neutral regions where there is like no protein coding even going on. And that really matters because if there's no purifying selection, then there is no background selection. So I want you to think of it like the fingers on your hand and uh, one of the fingers it gets a mutation. Well, purifying selection is going to come in to remove that and background selection is going to be bound to that like a Siamese twin and they're going to remove the alleles around that area as well. Well, if there's no purifying selection, that means there's no background selection. Really, really simple. And so when we're bringing up these pedigree mutation rate studies that we like to, which point to mitochondrial Eve living just 6,000 years ago, we're showing you that the regions that they look to are the hypervariable regions inside the D loop. And the D loop itself is not only as close to neutral as you can get with only a few base pairs that are undergoing purifying selection, but the hypervariable regions are completely neutral. They haven't found any protein coding regions in it that are highly preserved and saved. So 